What is going on, football fans? Back at it with another New York Giants video. I'll definitely have my mock draft out tomorrow. I was going to do it later today. Of course, the trade went down with Carson Wentz, so I wanted to get a video talking about that. Meant to have this up earlier, so you're getting a little bit later of an upload from me. In addition to that, there was a small move today by the New York Giants that I thought was worthy of at least talking a little bit about, being that the New York Giants need as much help as they possibly can on that offensive line. The New York Giants coaching staff has come out and said that right now they only have about four or five offensive linemen on the entire roster, and you have to figure they're going to field at least eight or nine at the start of the season. The Giants make a small move today, bringing in Matt Gano. Whether or not he'll make the opening day roster, I suppose that remains to be seen, but stands a good chance. Last year, he missed the entire season with the Atlanta Falcons due to an injury. Reportedly, he's completely recovered. He's completely healthy. He's still very young at 25 years old, a former undrafted free agent, went to a D3 school in Delaware. I think it was Wesley, if I remember off the top of my head, before he was discovered by the Atlanta Falcons in 2018. Didn't really get much playing time until 2020. He's got about 400 career snaps to his name. And he had mediocre results, which is what you'd expect from an undrafted free agent. But at a bare minimum, seems like he provides depth. And he also has the ability to play both the guard and tackle position, which is really good. Especially for an offensive lineman that you figure is going to be coming in in a reserve role if somebody uh, goes down. It's good to be able to have options with a guy like Gano coming off the bench for the New York Giants. So I think it's a good move by the Giants. Excited to see that the Giants picked up an offensive lineman. Obviously, our work is not done. I don't expect him to be starting at the start of the season, but he's a name that will at least you know compete for a spot in training camp. Let's get to know him a little bit more. I actually pulled up a couple of quotes from Patricia Trena. I'm going to be on her channel on Friday talking about the offseason with the New York Giants, so looking forward to that. This is coming out from Jeremy Fowler before we get to those. The New York Giants are signing offensive tackle Matt Gano to a one-year deal per source released by the Falcons in January after missing 2021 due to an injury. Gano is healthy and brings high upside to an O-line that needs it. So it sounds like it's a no-risk, high-reward move. Whether or not it works out, who knows? I don't expect him to be a starter, but definitely a guy that can help us coming off the bench if somebody goes down with an injury, and we know better than anybody else as Giants fans that we've had a ton of injuries on the offensive line. In terms of his exposure in the NFL, the majority of it came in 2020, where he actually played decent. I'm not going to say he played great, but the Falcons liked him enough to name him the starter going into 2021 at the guard position before he suffered his injury. This is what he did in 2020. He had 336 snaps, didn't commit a penalty, had one sack allowed, and had a 55 PFF grade in limited exposure. Learning a little bit more about him, got this from Patricia Trena. The Liberian-born Gano, 6'4", 305 pounds, grew up in New Jersey and played his college ball at Wesley College. Gano, who turns 25 in May, signed with the Falcons, an undrafted free agent in 2018 and made the 53-man roster that summer. However, he did not play in a regular season game, only being activated for the Falcons' final regular season contest. In 19, uh, Gano appeared in five games for the Falcons, and then in 2020, he appeared in 16 games for Atlanta with four starts, 376 offensive line snaps, most of those coming at right tackle. Gano allowed 17 pressures for a 95.9 pass blocker efficiency rating. So I guess in pass blocking, he was much better than run blocking, being that, he, that his overall grade was about 55. Here's what NFL.com's Lance Zerline had to say about Gano in the draft scouting report. Gano has long arms and possesses the desired physical traits teams covet from small school developmental pros, uh, prospects. He overwhelmed inferior competition with his size and talent in the D3 level. Still, he will need more coaching and technique work before he is ready to match up against NFL talent. Gano flashes ideal bend and athletic ability on tape, but needs more consistent aggression to handle guard responsibilities. Gano could be a late-round stash and coach project with average upside, and you have to think that the New York Giants probably view this guy the same way that the Atlanta Falcons did when they picked him up. Potentially a guy that's still relatively young. The only reason he's probably available is due to the fact that he had an injury last year. Reportedly, he's completely healthy, so maybe the New York Giants feel like with the proper coaching, maybe they can mold him into something. After all, there's been several undrafted free agents on the offensive line that have turned into something. So, like to pick up young Sounds like he has some upside, and hopefully the New York Giants can get the most out of him, but wanted to briefly talk about that minor move by the New York Giants. Being that, I know a lot of you guys, myself included, want to know what the New York Giants are going to do on the offensive line, which is going to turn my attention to the big story of the day, at least in the NFL world, and it does kind of impact the New York Giants, being that they play in our division. The Washington Commanders went out there and got a quarterback today. 
And a lot of people may laugh at this move. The the commanders, of course, brought Carson Wentz back to the division. The Wash, uh, obviously, formerly played with the Philadelphia Eagles, in which he had a lot of success before he sustained the injuries that he did, and they traded him to the Indianapolis Colts. Wentz last year, if you just look at his statistics, was solid. I mean, he had 27 touchdowns, seven interceptions, had a QB rating, I think, approaching 100, if I'm not mistaken. But if you talk to anybody that watches Indianapolis Colts football, they felt like he was incredibly underwhelming. And the Colts went into last season with Super Bowl aspirations. They traded a lot to be able to get Carson Wentz. I think it ultimately resulted in a first-round pick, if I'm not mistaken, along with, I think, another mid-round pick to the Philadelphia Eagles. In the end, the Eagles make out like bandits. They were able to get rid of him. They found what they hope is their future quarterback in Jalen Hurts and now have a ton of draft capital in this year's upcoming draft. From a Washington Commander's perspective, we'll get into exactly what they gave up in this trade, and then I'll give my full opinion on it. This was the move today, This uh, coming out from Adam Schefter. The Colts are trading quarterback Carson Wentz to Washington for a package of picks that is thought to include two third-round picks, sources tell ESPN. First, I'll talk about it from the Colts' perspective. From a Colts' perspective, I think this is a great move. Okay, yes, I understand that you got back less than what you gave up to initially get him last year. But when you look at Carson Wentz, and we're going to get into his contract right now, now the Colts get this contract off the books. Obviously, Frank Reich didn't feel like Carson Wentz was going to be the long-term answer there, even though they had a history with the Philadelphia Eagles, which was probably the reason they brought him in in the first place. Probably didn't love what he saw last year with all the help that he had there in Indianapolis, not elevating that football team to the playoffs. They get rid of this contract. When you look at Carson Wentz's contract, he's due to make $26 and $27 million now with the Washington Commanders over the next two years. So I think from a Colts perspective, it's a good move. It gives you the freedom now to potentially draft a quarterback in this year's draft, maybe trade for a journeyman like Jimmy Garoppolo, potentially sign a guy like Mitch Trubisky. You have a lot of options now, but now you get Carson Wentz off the team. You go out and get yourself two mid-round picks, and you're able to fill up the rest of your roster. So I think it's a good move for the Indianapolis Colts. Now the question becomes, are the Colts now in the market to potentially draft a quarterback in this year's draft? Because obviously everybody felt like the commanders were the team that was going to draft a quarterback or one of the teams that were going to draft a quarterback at number 11 overall. That may not be the case now, now that they got Carson Wentz. That doesn't mean if they love a quarterback, they won't take one. I won't completely rule it out, but you have to think if they give up draft capital and are committing $26, $27 million over the next two years to Carson Wentz, you have to figure that the Washington football team more than likely will not take a quarterback in this year's draft. The Colts certainly could, or they could elect to wait a year, potentially go with some journeyman quarterbacks and take one in the following draft. And maybe that's what a lot of teams are setting themselves up to do. Um, Obviously, the New York Giants could be a team thinking that way as well. Yesterday, we had a team with the Seattle Seahawks that could potentially be saying, we'll wait another year to take the quarterback. We'll get all of our answers come draft time. But the Colts are certainly a team that may potentially look to move up and get a quarterback in this year's draft. That remains to be seen. But from a Colts fan's perspective, I would like this move. I don't view Carson Wentz as the long-term answer for your football team. From a Washington Commander's perspective and a New York Giants fans perspective do I think it makes the Washington team better next year I do Taylor Heineke to me was a mediocre quarterback at best Carson Wentz you know he brings a winning pedigree the guy has won in the NFL before is he what he was before the injury absolutely not but I do think he's a significant upgrade for your football team and if Washington could stay relatively healthy maybe they can find a way to compete in this division after all the NFC East is not a bunch of you know, not, you know, not not a bunch of great teams from within our division. The Cowboys obviously are going to come in as the favorite, but if once is a significant upgrade, maybe Washington could do damage next year. As a Giants fan, am I scared? Absolutely not. We're familiar with Carson Wentz. We saw the way he looked his last year with the Philadelphia Eagles, and he's 31, 32 years old. He's not going to be a long-term answer there, not to mention he's had a ton of injury history throughout his career. But for a Washington Commanders fan, I don't know if I'd be excited, but I'd view it as a guy that could be a stopgap for a year or two that only cost me two third-round picks that could get me to hope what I hope is eventually a quarterback that I find in the draft. Washington, of course, kind of hinted at this a couple of weeks ago when word came out that they were looking for Russell Wilson. Well, to me, Carson Wentz is nowhere near Russell Wilson. Uh, Wilson, to me, is still a top-10 quarterback in the league. Carson Wentz, at least off of the last two seasons, you certainly could say he is not. We'll have to wait and see if he rebounds with the Washington Commanders. They have some weapons there, and we'll see how Wentz does. But as a Giants fan, not too scared. I don't view it as a big shakeup, and I'm kind of relieved that Washington didn't ultimately end up getting a guy like Deshaun Watson or potentially a guy like Russell Wilson, who, of course, went to another team yesterday. I'm happy as a Giants fan. Washington fan, I suppose you guys are somewhat happy as well, but 
wouldn't be ultra excited about it, but could be a significant upgrade over, over what you had last year. As always, guys, if you liked what you watched, please subscribe, drop a comment, maybe give me a little thumbs up. Cheers.